Hi friends, how are you all doing? I'm August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and this is another segment in the Zodiac book recommendation series. And today we're gonna be giving some book recommendations for Libras, if you're a Libra, but also Libra season in general. I hope you all are doing really well, and I hope this video gives you some fun recommendations for this Zodiac season. TBH, this one was very difficult for me to select books for, mainly because my partner is a Libra. So that was very, very difficult. I kept thinking about his personality traits rather than the Libra Zodiac as a whole. I kept thinking about books that he enjoys, that he recommends, that I recommended to him. It was very hard to separate Libra book recommendations from specifically partner recommendations. So I solidified some answers. I hope they work well. And they're very different than what I anticipated. I was kind of imagining something a little bit more light and fun, but these book recommendations are actually very dense. So just a heads up, these are very dense books. They're very dark, which I think fits perfectly with the autumnal theme of like October, spooky season, getting into fall, getting more into like rich, dense literature. So I hope you enjoy this video. Again, it's not made specifically for Libras. It's also just for the season that we're currently in. Let's get to it. And if you're new here, welcome. This is a series that I have had ongoing since last year in April fell off the bandwagon with doing these and now I'm back on and we're going to continue the series every zodiac season until we end at Pisces so there will be a whole playlist down below of what we have so far but also more are to come and we can finish the whole zodiac calendar together. So as always we're starting off with my handy dandy notebook and we're gonna kick things off with some famous Libra authors. In case none of these books do you anything, they don't sound good to you, maybe read from the mind of a Libra author. So to start we have Oscar Wilde, author of Picture of Dorian Gray. Honestly that's the only one I know off the top of my head, still have not read it, so maybe read some Oscar Wilde. And then we also have F. Scott Fitz Gerald. You got some classics. Great Gatsby, Tender as the Night. You know, a little bit of a problematic dude, but he's a Libra. Then we also have Queen of Horror and Mystery herself, Anne Rice. So you can read Interview with the Vampire, which I have on my TBR right over there for October. A lot of Anne Rice's books have so much to do with metaphysical, spooky characters and things happening. So I think that's like a very appropriate one for spooky season combined with Libra. <laughs> and lastly, we have Bella. Bell Hooks. Bell Hooks is an author that I've been wanting to read for so long. Every time I go thrifting, I'm looking for a Bell Hooks book. So maybe read some Bell Hooks this season. Okay, now on to my favorite part besides the actual book recommendations themselves. We go to yeoldcosmopolitan.com for the personality traits of every zodiac sign. This is their positive attributes mixed with the shadow side. So it's very tongue in cheek not coming from me. It is from cosmopolitan.com, but I love them every time. They're just so spot on and they really help me narrow down the books. <laughs> so Libras are known to be diplomatic, which can also be read as shapeshifter. They're also great listeners, which can be read as a little bit of a gossiper. They're also known to be a wayer upper. And I had to read the description as to like what they meant by this. And basically it makes sense. Libra is the balance of scales and very justice focused. So they will constantly overanalyze situations situations or environments to see if everything is being treated fairly, but this also makes them a little entitled. Things start to weigh into their favor more than not, apparently. So says Cosmopolitan. And then lastly, they're idealists, which just means they're indecisive. I find these attributes pretty accurate, especially with living with a Libra, being with a Libra. So here are the books that I decide to recommend for you all for Libra season. So every time I do the Zodiac video, I create four different superlatives. So we have a contemporary temporary book recommendation, nonfiction, a thriller, and then a classic. So let's go ahead and get started. So for my contemporary pick, I decided to do something that's a little bit not as popular, but it's a book that I really, really enjoyed. It was my favorite book of earlier this year, probably before spring, like early winter. And that is The Body Artist by Don DeLeo. This is a super thin, very strange, very odd, beautifully written book that follows a female character named Lauren. And she is an artist and her and her husband are staying in this tiny little cabin on the ocean and 
you start immediately to notice something is very off. There's a lot of ambiguity, a lot of repeated phrases and sentences that don't quite make sense. It's as if her and her husband, as they're interacting with each other, they're not really talking to each other. They're just talking out into space. And as the book progresses, I really don't want to give anything away with this book, but I do have a reading vlog dedicated to <laughs> reading it because it was such a journey to go on. And I'll link that video down below where I talk way more in depth about it if you are interested in more concrete details, but I really don't want to spoil anything. But as more information is unraveled, Lauren then encounters a strange man who just is in her home and she doesn't understand why he's there, what he's doing. She thinks he's a ghost. She thinks he's a homeless person. She thinks that she needs to get help, but yet she just continues to interrogate this man and trying to solve it herself. So it's very like logic focused, very much trying to find justice for herself or for this situation. She's trying really hard to get information out of him. So I think that that wear upper is very in play here, but also weird things start to happen with this man because he starts saying things and mimicking things and sounding exactly like people in her life that she's known and she's lost. It's the voice, it's the cadence, it's the way he's speaking. He's like a parrot. He's just mimicking all of these things that have been said to her and of people that she's loved and lost. And in this sense, that's where the shapeshifter comes in. That's why I chose this book is because this character, this male character is just, he's a shapeshifter. He's mocking or repeating or just soaking up all this information and then regurgitating it to this woman. And she is trying desperately to figure out what is going on and what is happening. I feel like both of those characters are very Libra tendencies and she just wants to keep researching and discovering and understanding what is going on. So it's this balance of understanding concrete logic facts, but also like emotional, like this is obviously bringing up a lot of emotions and she's getting angry at this guy. She's saddened by him. She wants to help him. There's all these different emotions at play as well. And she keeps saying in her mind that she's going to call the police. She's going to seek help. She's going to do all these things. And that's what leaves her being paralyzed and indecision, which is also a big leap trait. So this is a book that I'm highly recommending. It's very odd. It's bizarre. It's very surreal list. It's very fragmented and gorgeous, which is exactly like my type of writing style that I really, really enjoy is when we get to fill in the blanks a little bit ourselves. I flew through this. I wasn't anticipating flying through it. I really wanted to savor this book when I was reading it, but I just could not stop reading it. So I am recommending this for our like contemporary literary fiction category. So that is The Body Artist. Next in our superlative journey, I'm gonna be recommending a nonfiction book. And this was really hard for me to narrow down. I was stuck between two different books that I could recommend. And I decided to go with In the Dark Room by Susan Faludi. Now this is a very, very dense memoir, biography book. It is chunky and I actually donated my copy a few years ago after I read it. It was a very, very dense memoir, but incredibly fascinating and incredibly well researched and detail oriented. But this follows Susan Faludi, who was already a very talented author um, at the time, as she discovers that her father, who's somewhat estranged from her, is transgender. And she goes to travel to her father in Hungary, in Budapest. Susan still refers to her father as her father, but her father is a woman. So this book is Susan uncovering her father's past and history and from these again very Libra scale perspectives of logic understanding where then Susan dives into very rich very deep history of Budapest of Hungary of her father's past fleeing the Holocaust of all of these amazing life adventures that her father has had but then on the other scale coming to terms with the emotional weight and density of finding out in much later years her father is now much much, much older, probably in her like 70s, I want to say, coming to the fact that your parent is transgender and what does that mean? And this book greatly, deeply explores the history of transgender folks, the first few surgeries that became available, um, a lot about sexual orientation. It is a beautiful balance and mix of deeply emotional, difficult topics because her father is still very closed off and very walled off and very much estranged to the author Susan, but also this very rich, biographical, dense 
history. There are chapters in here that are just filled with facts and knowledge and logic and it is just incredible how Susan weighs both of these things in this one very chunky book. So Susan is very diplomatic. She is a researcher at heart. She is incredibly smart and she continues to press her father for more and more information and in that sense she's a very very good listener. She is really wanting to understand and learn and gather information to then make a consensus but at the same time when you're doing that there's obviously her own childhood wounds associated with the information she's getting now so it is a little bit biased a way or upper so to say but that is a non-fiction book i'm recommending again it's very dense but it is so detail oriented so incredible such an amazing story that just goes over years and histories of both personal but then also geographical and worldly. It's a lot about religion and sexual orientation and gender identity and it's just incredible. It's very dense, it's thick, it is very very well written. So that's the book I'm recommending which again not a very lighthearted book. Definitely gonna be trigger warnings in there for a lot of different things. Um, war and poverty and the holocaust and just a lot. That's what I'm recommending. Okay my friends moving on. That one was a very difficult book to describe because there's just so much in it. Now we're gonna be recommending a thriller. A thriller recommendation and I'm gonna recommend you all In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This was making its rounds on booktube for a while. It's a very popular book. This was the author's debut and for very good reason. I thoroughly enjoyed this thriller. It's dense but I feel like I flew through it. I could not stop reading. Every chapter ended on a cliffhanger. I wanted to know what was going on. But in this book we're following our protagonist Jessica and Jessica is somebody who maybe you don't necessarily want to root for. She is someone who deeply struggles with feelings of inadequacy and she is constantly trying to one-up everyone in her life. She's trying to prove herself that she since graduating from university 10 years ago has been trying to get the top jobs, trying to stay in shape, trying to like do all these things, all these achievements, and she is trying to live her ideal life. So there's that Libra trope of idealism, which then just becomes like very almost phony in Jessica's sense, but she really wants to prove herself worthy of the achievements she's accomplished. So when the 10 year reunion happens at her university, her and her old university friends come together and it's also a period of mourning. Jessica deeply wants her classmates to see who she is now and not the person she was when she graduated and they're also at the same time reflecting and reminiscing on one of their friends in the friend group named Heather who was murdered and the culprit was never caught they did originally blame a few different people there were quite a few scapegoats and this book is just a slow but also fast and intriguing thread pulling unraveling of everything that's happened. We're bouncing chapters, we're seeing so many different points of view, and it's all based on interpretation and perception. And this book is just filled with gossip. It is old friends spilling secrets about each other, about rumors they've heard, about gossip, about promises that they were supposed to keep to their friends. It is just ruthless with gossip. And these students, some of them come from incredibly entitled backgrounds as well, which I find very, very interesting. It follows, I think there are about like six or seven different main characters in this and it was actually very easy to keep all of them straight. So I think all of them combined were once again getting that, that Libra scale balance of like wanting to find justice for Heather's murder but also not quite wanting to look into all of the dark shady secrets of this friend group. We're traveling in the past and then bouncing forward to present day. It's just so ever evolving, so many things to consider and to weigh out in your head. Again, that beautiful mix of logic, mixed with emotion, which one is going to outweigh. A lot of them are fighting for their own justice in a sense of past wrongdoings being righted, like having their own specific motives. Every character has gone through their own transformation and is seeking something from this friend group or retribution or seeking their own truth. I just thought it was a really really fascinating thriller and I think it's a really really fun one to read. I really really enjoyed it so that is the thriller that I'm recommending for Libra season. All right friends, Friends, we are on to the last book for Libra recommendations and this one was difficult. This is the classic. This one was very very difficult for me to decide on because I had three books in total that I was debating between classics like which one would best fit 
Libra season. And I decided to do actually like a short story by Fyodor Dostoevsky, and that is The Dream of a Ridiculous Man. This is a short story that I read my senior year of high school for fun during the summer, during a very transitional time in my life. And since then, it's really stuck with me. And I've been nervous to reread it because I'm scared it's not going to be as good as I remember. This story is absolutely incredible, but there are definitely a lot of content warnings, my friend, so please be cautious. We're following our main protagonist, who's a man, and he is contemplating unaliving himself. So that is the biggest content warning, trigger warning for sure. But in doing so, he then has a very interesting encounter that he can't forget about. He can't shake it off. And that night he goes back to his apartment and he is contemplating unaliving himself. And instead he falls into this miraculous dream where he's transported to this realm, this world that is so incredibly idealistic. It's this utopia. Everyone's happy and connected and there's just this overwhelming sense of unconditional love in this society. And he's living there for many, many years. And it's just so beautifully written, my friends. It's so stunning. Uh, the edition I have, it's translated by David Magershack. And this is the Modern Library edition that I have. It's this swirling, beautiful, like, writing. And it, I just, oh my gosh. At the time, I remember just feeling so seen by this book and so overwhelmed. But what's interesting is that our main character who we're reading from his perspective he then finds himself teaching the people of this utopia how to lie and then comes corruption and then comes the manifestation and creation of science of math of all of these like very fundamental government positions things become so much more stated in truth and and there's a right and there's a wrong and there's a the rigorous tight constricting form which i feel like is very libra-esque it's that again the balance like you want justice but you also want peace. They are the peacemakers, I feel like, of the Zodiac. So our main character is trying desperately to get back to that like happy, beautiful place that it was before. And it's this power, it's this dichotomy between the two of how do you preserve something like that love, but still having something as institutional as math and science and facts and logic. It is just so incredible. I remember just, I think I just read it at the perfect time where I was just so overwhelmed with like, these are things that I've thought about too. It talks about religion as well. Like it's just so all encompassing and it's just so intelligent. It's so thinky and intellectual and broader and covers so, so many different topics. And I just really love this short story. I, I highly recommend it if you're, you're comfortable with the trigger warnings and content warnings, but this is a, a short story I feel like is not well known by Dostoevsky and it's my favorite. I should definitely reread it because it is just phenomenal to me. It's been a long time so I can't remember how well it holds up but I found it like incredibly thought-provoking and I feel like it's a very Libra-esque in the way that there are just so many dualities in this book and I feel like that's kind of the epitome of Libra as well. It's just that constant trying so hard to balance so many different things all the time. So that's a classic I'm recommending. I'm not sure if it 100% fits, but it's more of an essence, I feel like. I feel like it's the broader theme that feels a little bit more Libra-esque rather than the plot itself, because it's a very broad plot. So much happens in just a short few amount of pages. So that is The Dream of a Ridiculous Man. So there we have it, my friends. Those are the books that I'm recommending for this Libra season. They're all very dark and spooky, and this color palette is just delicious, if I may say so myself. I would love to hear your thoughts if you've read any of these, if you're a Libra, definitely say hello down below. And if you made it to the end of this video, definitely comment a little Libra Zodiac emoji and just maybe like some little book stacks. But thank you all so incredibly much for being here, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this little video and I can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next one. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!